Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you again. How is everybody doing? We hope you're doing well. We uh, don't think that we have any crazy weather on um, in either our, of our hometowns. We're still in our Texas hometown, but we're making plans to come back to Half Moon Bay later this spring. So we look forward to seeing you uh, all in a few weeks. Yeah. This week, we have a new study, and it's actually, we're going back one, one, uh, one week uh, before the events that we studied last week on the betrayal of Jesus by Judas. We're going to review some events that took place just prior to Judas coming to the garden and betraying Jesus. So we learned a couple weeks ago from, from the Bible about a prayer that Jesus modeled for us. And we called that the Lord's Prayer. And we, we went through that study. And today we um, are looking at prayer again. And this time we're still leaning on the knowledge that we learned that th through the Lord's Prayer. We acknowledge that, and, and that means we say that we're all sinners. Um, and, and our sins may not be exactly like Judas's study, sin that we studied last week, but, but we still all sin. We and, all sin every day, unfortunately. And so when we studied about the Lord's Prayer, we learned about the saving grace that we have in Jesus. Our trust and our, our belief and our faith in Jesus and in God's Word. Um, and the prayer that we learned in that study applies today here as well. What we'll learn this week, we're going to learn about the true power of prayer and how our circumstances may not change through prayer, right. but our attitude towards our circumstances will change. And that through prayer, God will lead us and direct us. So we're going to learn three major points. One is... We see how Jesus, in the hardest time of his earthly life, as he is facing the crucifixion, or what we celebrate is on Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Christ, who is crucified, uh, crucified on that Friday prior to the Sunday. Uh, it is with, he knows every detail and every whip and beating that he is going to experience. Yeah. He already knows what that is. And he leans on his heavenly father for strength and encouragement to go through with the events late that his father has laid out for him for our salvation. We'll see how even though he is sorrowful about what he is going to go through, that his trust is in his heavenly Father. And that's never weakened. Never. Never weakened. And it shows us how, no matter how difficult things become for us, mm -hmm. we need to have faith and trust in our heavenly Father. Because as God loved Jesus, he loves us the same. It's true. And Jesus will show us he understood the importance of what he was doing. Even though it was a very difficult, difficult task that he had to go through. Mm -hmm. He had to do that for our salvation, for our forgiveness of sin. If Jesus had not died on the cross and shed his blood, we would be unsaved sinners. As it is, we are saved sinners. And there is a big difference between being an unsaved sinner and a saved sinner. And as you grow, you'll understand more and more what that difference is. Would you lead us in opening prayer? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much again for bringing us back together. Thank you for providing us the Bible from which we can study. Thank you for Jesus and his willingness to walk as a human being which gives us such confidence that he knows what our struggles are. He understands why we sometimes feel like there's nothing we can do to make anything better. And thank you, Lord, 
for showing us that leaning on the Heavenly Father, praying to the Heavenly Father, can give us peace no matter how difficult our situation is, no matter how much trouble we're in. And that our faith in you and your love for us are the strength that will get us through anything. So we just give praise and thanks to you, Lord. Help us to be good teachers. Help us to be good listeners. And help us to listen, to take what we've learned and shine that light in the week that's to come. And I ask this in Jesus' name, and then I say amen. Amen. All right, we're going to start in Matthew 26. And we'll start with verses 36 and following. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that was John and James, along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you keep men keep watch? with me for one hour, he asked Peter. Now we're going to read verses 41 through 46. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is weak. It, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'm going to say that again because what Jesus said was that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. And when he came back again, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let's go. Here comes my betrayer. So he told the disciples what was happening, even though they were deep asleep. And I think we all can relate to being so physically tired that we can't keep our eyes open. And that's, we're not criticizing the disciples. Mm. It was just that they were not able. They had had a long day. They had spent many hours uh, preparing for that day. Uh, we don't. It was probably in midnight by the time they were in the garden, and they were just physically tired, and they keep falling asleep. And Jesus loved the disciples. He was not angry with them. His love for them exceeded their inability to support him at the time that he really needed support in his earthly body. All right, so now we got some questions, and I like asking questions. I'm not even going to ask this time if I can ask the question. Ah, okay. Question one. Mm -hmm. What grew in the garden where Jesus took his disciples? Olive trees. Yeah. Now, we read so much in the Bible about oil. We read about people being anointed with oil. And we believe this to have been olive oil. And it was um, olive trees grow very slowly. And some of them are very, very old. In the Garden of Gethsemane today, there are trees that were young trees when Jesus was in the garden. I think last year we saw pictures of it when we were able to meet as a group 
uh, we had some photographs we did. of the ancient trees, we the did. olive trees. And you can take a tour of that area. And it was, today with tours going through, it may not be quite the peaceful place that it was at that time, but it was a place where Jesus knew that it would be quiet and that there, it would be peaceful and it would be a place where he could where he could pray. At least we, that, that's what we understand. And it's important to know that we can pray anywhere. You can pray in a garden. You can pray in a subway. You can pray in your home, in your church, in your school, in your car. You can pray anywhere. Because God is always with us, no matter where we are. And he always wants to hear from us. Yep, absolutely. And, and he hears from us in prayer. But it is good to have a quiet place yeah. in your home or in your yard where you can just go out and spend time with the Lord. Yeah. And that is kind of special. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have have these areas that they go to when they first arise or before they go to bed. And it's just a time of quiet reflection where they can talk to God. Mm -hmm. How many disciples did Jesus take with him into the garden? Three. Three. He took three of them. And the disciples were kind of like Jesus' best friends. We, we know that he was close to them. He cared for them. And they were his friends. And, and these guys might be thought of as his best friends. He spent all of his time with them. He spoke with them and taught them about the kingdom of heaven. And we we should do the same with our best friends. Yeah, we should share. And he, if you remember, he was sharing the burden, the sorrowful burden that he had for what events that were coming up for him going to the cross. He shared that with his friends. And you should be able to share meaningful things with your friends. Yeah. But remember, your best friend is God the Father, and you can always share whatever is troubling you with God. Okay, we're down to four? Yeah, no, three. What did Jesus ask God to take away from him? Jesus asked God to take away the cup of suffering. And He's referring to what he knows are the events that are about to come. And he refers to that as a cup of suffering. And in part, this is a, lead, a lesson in obedience, which helps us to be obedient to God and, and the things he asks us to do. And it's also, if you think about it, when you're asked to do something that's very difficult, when you think of a cup, if that requires Jesus to put his hands on the cup and to actually drink from the cup. And that's not, that's a, a, a picture, a visual picture that we can imagine. And that's what Jesus did for us. He didn't hold the cup in his hands, but he, he willingly went to the cross for us. And that's what he's referring to. And this is, this is something that he, he chose to participate in. And he sh through this act, he's also showing us as Christians that sometimes God's going to ask us to do some stuff, mm -hmm. and it's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. and it could be hard, mm -hmm. and it could be frightening for us. But if we're in God's will, it will be, in, in, and if we follow it, then we're doing the correct thing. And Jesus understood that. He, he, what he was being asked to do was hard. He was willing to do it, and he understood that it was for the greater good, that it was going to benefit all mankind. And what were the disciples doing while Jesus was in prayer? When Jesus returned from prayer, the, the disciples were sleeping. And we often hear this lesson. We also often, I've been often taught this lesson with the kind of tone of voice like, can you believe those guys were sleeping? And... That's understandable. Their good friend and teacher, Jesus, was suffering and was, was sorrowful and had anguish about him. That means he's just torn up and feeling pained. And 
these guys went to sleep. And Jesus asked them to stay awake and pray. But they didn't. And I don't know, have you ever fallen asleep where you didn't intend to? Yes, and, quite often. And I, I think it's fair to at least consider that it was not their intention to fall asleep. That they too had lived through some very, very long days. Um, and some very trying days. And they were still trying to understand everything and and they fell asleep. I And I think it's important to, to realize that they did not fully understand what the true. next three days that's true. I think that's true. were going to entail. Yeah. That, that Christ would be taken prisoner, beaten, and hung on a cross. They didn't understand that. Uh, even though... Uh, Jesus told them that his death was in them. I don't think it registered with them. Because I think if it did, they would have not fallen asleep, no matter how tired they were. And when Jesus found them to be asleep, he, he went back into the garden. And he took a walk around the garden and continued to pray. And he prayed deeply to his father. Mm -hmm. Again, he was... Sharing with his best friend, which was God the Father, his father, the deep sorrow that he had in his heart, but with the fact that no matter how sorrowful he was, he was willing to do God's will, not his will. And he shared that, and he shared it deeply with his father. And he just expressed his love. And he expressed his obedience to his father. Mm -hmm. And he said for us, the example. We can go to our parents. We can go to our friends. We can go to other people around us that God has put in our lives when we need help, when we need to, to talk it through, when we need to try to get better understanding. Sometimes those people aren't available. Sometimes they can't hear why it's so troubling for us. We can always go to God for help. And we can always trust that he understands us. And even when we don't have the words to say it well, even when we can't find good words to use that can explain to God what we're talking about, we don't have to worry about that. He knows. He knows us. He wants to be with us. He wants us to reach out to him. Jesus knew this. Jesus taught this, and he took his biggest, heaviest concerns to God through prayer. And while it didn't change the events that were to come, God did help Jesus to remember how important it was for him to do what he's supposed to do. And he eased Jesus' anxiety. Yeah, he did. Uh, and Jesus, again, was obedient unto death to his Father. Mm -hmm. And we need to be obedient to our Father in heaven. Uh, we've often talked about the Godhead, which is uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And we just encourage you to open your heart, talk to to Jesus, no matter what's troubling you, he will help you and encourage you to get through difficult times. He will not take difficult times away, mm -hmm. always. Sometimes he Sometimes. will, other times he won't. And uh, we just have to trust in God the Father who loves us as much as he loved his son. There was something that Jesus had to do for us, meaning us humans, us mankind, and uh, God knew what had to be done, but he, and he gave his son the strength to go through it mm -hmm. and to do it in a loving and caring way. So with that, we're going to close for this week. We will continue studying about uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus uh, as we uh, continue to work towards the celebration of Easter. Mm -hmm. So 
But we look forward to seeing you all soon. Yep. And uh, with that, uh, Julia, will you close uh, in prayer for us? I will. I will. Dear Jesus, dear Heavenly Father and Holy Spirit who helps bring us to God, helps us find the words, and helps guide us every day. We thank you for your love. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your word. We ask that you keep us safe. We ask you that we ask that you keep us focused and to remember the main thing and not to get all caught up in some of the stuff that just isn't really very important that comes up in our lives. Help us to be able to figure out which is which, Lord. And in all cases, in all times, help help us to turn our eyes to you for guidance, for help, for peace, just as you did your son Jesus. And we pray this with much thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you next week. See you next time.